Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Um, welcome to the Friday's Bible study. I have a bad cold and um, it's going in my chest and stuff. So I'm going to try and get, um, get through this for you guys without a whole lot of extra talking today. You get lucky. Okay, today's lady, um, her name is Delilah. I'm sure that we've all probably heard quite a bit about her. And um, her story is in Judges chapter 16, verse 4. <clears throat> and it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. Say her name, and most Christians get an immediate picture of a sultry woman and desire gone wrong. The physically powerful Israelite judge, Samson, fell for this beautiful and desirable Philistine. As wise as he must have been, Samson had one fatal flaw. He never chose well when it came to women. Those foreign temptresses, forbidden by God's law, always seemed to claim his attention. His marriage to a Philistine woman had ended disastrously, yet here he was, becoming romantic with Delilah. Maybe he thought it was okay as long as they didn't marry, but he should have read his law a bit more carefully. No sooner had Samson fallen for this bad babe then the rulers of her nation asked Delilah to do some spying for them. The Israelite was so strong that they couldn't capture him, and they had a series of grudges against him. So they asked Delilah to find out what made her lover so powerful. Once they had his secret, the rulers planned to make him a slave. Maybe it was the money that made this bad girl decide Samson was expendable? 1,100 she shekels from each of five rulers was no small amount of cash in that day. Delilah must have decided that all she needed was money, not love, and in her greed, she betrayed Samson completely. At the same time, you have to wonder what Samson was thinking. Perhaps he enjoyed playing romantic games, but didn't he get the least bit suspicious when his beloved asked how his strength could be subdued? One moment, please. All right, sorry, I didn't want to blow my nose on camera. If you guys hear anything, my sweet husband is wrapping the Christmas gifts for our grandson, so I thank him for that. I don't have the strength or energy. Okay, um, we were just at where he, they wondered if, um, why he wasn't suspicious when his beloved asked him how his strength could be subdued. Didn't he figure that she was a Philistine and that others could be putting her up to something? He'd had a very similar experience with his wife before their marriage fell apart. So you'd think he had to have had an inkling, especially when he gave Delilah three false answers. You wonder how many times God had to show Samson the same lesson for him to learn. But when Samson should have left off dallying with Delilah, he kept coming around, giving her the opportunity to nag him endlessly. You don't love me, she complained. And, ev and evidently, he couldn't bear to see her unhappy. Eventually, she wore him down, and he admitted that his vow as a Naz Nazarite and the long hair that was part of it gave him his strength. Cut his hair, he said, and he'd be as weak as any other man. The Philistines took complete advantage of this information. Delilah got Samson to sleep in her lap and a man came in to shave his head. Awakened, Samson soon stood powerless, and the Philistines made him a sightless slave. 
But these temporary victors forgot that his hair grows again, and grow it did. Inside their temple, the Philistine rulers and an assembled gather to rejoice at the capture of Israel's strong man. In the midst of the revealing, the crowd called Samson out to perform for them. Now the temple was crowded with men and women. All the rulers of the Philistines were there. And on the roof were about 3,000 men and women watching Samson perform. Adorned with a new head of hair and imbued with renewed strength, Samson stood before them, prayed for strength, pushed against the pillars with all of his might, and brought down the pagan temple, killing himself and everyone in it. Who knows if Delilah was also there amid the crowd, though she didn't seem like the religious kind. Perhaps she had taken that opportunity to rejoice at the effectiveness of her sexual powers. Look at Delilah, and you get a clear picture of how not to live. Need an example of what loose living will get you? Well, she's the poster child for it. The pain she caused someone who loved her ran so deep that Samson didn't mind sacrificing his life. If he could destroy the pagan temple, he'd be taken too. Samson had been used by an immoral woman who evidently felt no guilt at betraying him. Delilah's Delilah backs up God's word, which commands a faithful husband and wife lifestyle. Romance is not a game, but a lifelong commitment, and any sexual activity outside marriage leads to heartbreak. Maybe yours won't come as quickly as Samson's did, and you may not die, but you can count on some pain when you don't live God's way. Just ask Delilah. If you could find her under all that rubble, that is. I just wanted to share what I wrote when I first read this real quick. I said, this has always been one of my favorite stories when I was young, but not because of the power of Delilah that she had over Samson, but because Samson found out how bad Delilah was. And not only did he regain his strength and hair, but also his servant's mind. I think as he stood between those two pillars, he was made blind, you know, earlier, but his hearing was just fine. And can you imagine how loud and how mocking the crowd was? He knew his own life was going to end, but this was the only way to destroy the people in the pagan temple. All right, everyone, have a good Friday, and um, I will see you tomorrow. God bless. Bye.